Hi there. You're listening to Norway Next, a podcast by Visit Norway, geared towards the modern travel mindset. If you are going to a Norwegian city anytime soon, this is the podcast for you. Picture this. You're standing on a red painted bridge framed with intricate carvings on its wooden railings with a plaque that reads Portal of Happiness. There's a slight chill in the air, and as you pull your coat closer, you notice a couple placing a lock together on one of the bridge's railings. You feel a burst of happiness standing here. Perhaps there's something special about this bridge. You walk across the river, and on the other side, you arrive at the coziest, most delightful neighborhood right on the riverbank, with colorful buildings in every hue. Breathing in the familiar scent of freshly fallen leaves, you walk past an open window happy chatter and laughter flowing out and you see a crackling fireplace as you walk by and a sense of warmth and joy fills you in this historic city welcome to Trondheim I'm Bjarte Gram from Visit Norway and today I am very excited to chat about Trondheim with a history that goes back more than a thousand years we promise you a very exciting and delicious introduction to this historical city in central Norway. We are very pleased to welcome Kirsten Schulz. She's the director at Visit Trondheim, and she's a connoisseur of all things Trondheim and a self-proclaimed foodie. So let's get started. Kirsten, if Trondheim was a person, how would you describe its personality? Well, first of all, I would say Trondheim is a very kind person. This person is really easygoing, down-to-earth, jovial, laid-back, kind of uh, sporty person, which likes to combine nature, but also the city life, and always out for new adventures. Uh, Trondheim as a person is not showing off, but at the same time, really proud of the history, of the long history, and also of, of all the city has to offer today. So it's, a, you know, it's a, it's a person you very easily like. Mm. What does a perfect day in Trondheim look like to you? You know, I've been living in Trondheim for 16 years now, and I come from a big city. I lived in Hamburg before that. And um, what is so good about Trondheim is that you have, it's you know, it's an easy walkable city. It's short distances to the nature, but also to the city center. And my perfect day would start with a bath in the fjord. In fact, that's maybe a special recommendation, but nevertheless, it's a good start to get ready for the day with the visiting small cafes, um, taking a good lunch with some local food, um, shopping maybe in small, unique uh, shopping places we have in the city center. And of course, uh, maybe the best place I know is sitting outside the Nidros Cathedral, having a coffee there and watching this, I think, quite unique building in the center of, of Norway, you can say. And uh, so far north compared to all the other similar churches in Europe. Wow. I'm getting goosebumps just hearing you talk about this. (laughs) (laughs) It sounds like a perfect day. Before we dig deeper... We're going to do a little quiz here at the Norway Next podcast. We like to play a game of yes, yes, no. Basically, two facts and one false statement. And we'll say the three things and our listeners will guess which of the three is the false one. So here we go. Is it A, this is the final stop of the northernmost pilgrimage in the world? B, you can take your bike on a lift so you don't have to bike uphill? Or C, you can go swimming in the Nidelven River? Stay tuned, and we'll reveal the answer later in this episode. Now, I want to talk to you about Trondheim's position as a food destination. It has earned the title European Region of Gastronomy in 2022. 
What a stamp of approval that is. So what is it that makes the city deserving of such a distinguished title? Well, I think the main aspect is that we we live in the middle of the best food area in Norway. We live in the area of Trøndelag, central Norway, and we are close to the best produce you can get from the sea, from the mountains, and also from a vast uh, agricultural area around the city. And that makes the city being able to use all these perfect ingredients we get and the produce. And it has a quite a long history, you could say, because it started around about 25 years ago that people really fought for being able to use all this fantastic local produce and now producing award-winning cheese. We have award-winning seafood and we have this um, reindeer meat from the mountains around the Rødos. And all this has kind of um, boosted the gastronomical scene in Trondheim and really motivating all these young chefs uh, who are in the city to to make the best out of the local produce. And um, um, just that has kind of yeah resulted in three Michelin star restaurants. Wow, that is so impressive. And in this nature's buffet table, as we call the city, um, it really continues to impress with food-related events. I know there's two major food happenings taking place in Trondheim over the next two years. You have the World Cheese Awards in October of 2023 and the Boku Store Europe in 2024. It's amazing. And it sounds like Trondheim is getting a lot of international recognition in the culinary world. Yes, uh, in fact, and and uh, also maybe uh, um, happening which has uh, boosted this uh, situation is our annual food festival, local food festival, which was uh, claimed to be the best local food festival in Europe and a local brewery festival too we have at the same time where we gather over three days all the best we have in the, the region and really make people come from near and far to experience all this uh, extraordinary food. And um, again, uh, many chefs and, and young people working in the restaurants, they now uh, kind of are ambassadors for, for what we have in our region and uh, attract a lot of uh, visitors to come to Trondheim and to taste and drink all the good things we have. Mm. And speaking of foodies, you shared with me that you are passionate about food. I mean, how can you not be living in Trondheim? But what are some of your favorite food experiences that you've had in Trondheim? Anything sort of under the radar that mostly only locals know about? Well, we have some small hidden gems, uh, which uh, maybe even the locals are not uh, quite aware of. Uh, we have like um, the Streif Bakery at the Nidaros Pilgrimage Hostel, which sounds kind of uh, also quite down to earth. But they only use uh, local grain, uh, local ingredients for baking and producing uh, lunch food mainly, uh, which is quite ox- extraordinary. And it's located directly at the River Nidelven with the perfect view. And it's hidden behind the Nidros Cathedral. So it's really, really a hidden gem. Uh, but also some of the, um, uh, the lunch restaurants, Uh, you don't have this set menu where you know next week I get this or that or this or that. It's every week something new because the local farmers around Trondheim bring something new every week and they create the menu out of that. And that's like Sellanero, which is in the uh, near the cultural area of um, uh, Trondheim in the city center. And we have some of these restaurants also in the evening, like Spontan, Wienbad, Le Bistro, where with young people, really energetic young people who love what they do and love to that the visitors are so happy about the, what they taste and the experience they get. Wow, great tips. So, so Kirsten, while on the topic of food, can we talk about hotel breakfasts for a minute? I understand that there are some award-winning breakfasts that have also put Trondheim on the map. Yeah, that's a, a, a quite uh, also amazing history. Um, uh, going back kind of 15 years when a new hotel uh, established in, in Trondheim, the Nidelven Hotel, 
And um, when asking them 15 years ago, what are you going to be different with, with this hotel? They said, with the food. Already 15 years ago, so also that's a step in this uh, direction. And they started um, with um, making this extraordinary good breakfast buffet. So today the Scandic uh, Niedelvan Hotel has won the prize for the best uh, breakfast buffet uh, 13 or 14 times. And that makes all the other hotels also wanting to deliver so good a good breakfast buffets and has made the quality in general so much better in the whole city. And I would even say all Norway. Hmm. And for listeners out there who are not too familiar with this, I think that holds true for most Norwegian hotels, to your point. Not only is breakfast usually always included, but it's really, really great with tons of options and locally produced cheeses, meats, breads and preserves catering to, you know, both the pickiest Mm. eater and uh, foodie like myself. So bottom line, if you're not an early riser normally, you're going to want to make an exception while in Trondheim, Mm. right? Um, Okay, let's move on to something else. After all that eating, we may need to do some walking. And I feel like Trondheim is one of those cities you just want to get lost in. What are some neighborhoods our listeners should check out that are easy to walk to? As I already mentioned, it's uh, it's uh, the whole city is really easy walkable, and uh, but uh, you cannot miss out the area of Bucklanet uh, with these uh, cozy cobblestone streets and the uh, wooden houses in in all different colors with small cafes and shops. Uh, that's worthwhile just strolling around and uh, taking a picture here and there. Uh, but also the area around the Nidros Cathedral is amazing. Um, this combination of such a, a, a you know deep history, which has um, uh, set its uh, mark on the whole city and and the whole region, in fact. But then you also have these uh, more newer areas along the fjord, where you have, for example, you have the powerhouse. And what's the powerhouse? Yes, yeah, that's the first house in Norway which produces more energy than it uses itself. And the, uh, the energy which is left over is used to charge the e-buses in Trondheim so they can um, drive uh, emission-free through the city with all the passengers. And the um, powerhouse is at the area of Brattøra, which is along the fjord where you can sit down, you can watch the fjord, the sunset, and just uh, relax a lot, take a bath, as I already mentioned. And the uh, powerhouse is uh, drawn by um, Snøhetta, which is quite a famous uh, architect uh, house in, in Norway, also drawn the opera house in Oslo, which is world famous. And uh, yeah, so there are many places to go. Also, Sulsiden, the old shipyard area, which is today kind of a bustling area with lots of cafes and uh, p- where pay- people just sit out, hang out. Sunny side, it's called. Sunny side of life. Sunny side. Um, going back a step to history and speaking of Vikings and Middle Age history, um, it's hard to talk about Trondheim and not dive into the historical significance of its rich history. Can you walk us through some of these places and attractions one can see today? Yes, you can start at the Nidros Cathedral. I mean, Beate, no Norwegian or foreign person can come to Trondheim without taking a look at the Absolutely Nidros Cathedral. True. Because it's, it's the, sacred. Yes, it's the northernmost medieval cathedral in the world, in fact. And uh, it's an amazing, huge um, a stone cathedral uh, full of ornaments and uh, uh, small statues and really impressing. And what may be most impressing is that it's at 64 degrees north, really north. And the whole area around this um, with these, uh, um, the Archbishop's Palace, uh, because Trondheim, in fact, was the, the center of um, the church in the medieval times. So this is kind of the must see in Trondheim to walk around and just kind of smell the, the history what has um, made Trondheim the place it is today. Uh, but we have other uh, really good museums in Trondheim picking up different kind of history. Uh, we have the 
Ringve Museum of uh, Music and Art. You have the Rockheim, which is a national museum of popular music. Uh, we have the Sverigesport Museum. I, I could mention many, many more. But it's really that you can have this uh, culture or art day too, just uh, taking in the history of all we have to offer in Trondheim. Mm. Oh, to what you said, I mean, stepping into Nidarustuman Cathedral for the first time, for me, just felt so spiritual. And also the knowledge that it was presumably constructed over the tomb of Norwegian Saint King Olav, who was the great-great-grandson of Norway's very first king, Harald the Fair here. So, I mean, the history here is just mind-boggling. Let's get back to how people travel around in Trondheim and how do you get to places. If you're using Trondheim as a base and you say have three to four days, what would you recommend combining with Trondheim and how would one go about doing that? It's a good thing to take the train, in fact, because we are a hub for uh, train connections in Norway. So you can easily take the train to the mountain area around Røros, this UNESCO World Heritage Site with the southern Sami culture. It's a, You can do it as a one-day trip. Uh, you can also take further north to the agricultural area around Innerøy, the golden route. And um, you can take the... The train to Opdal, our mountain region, where you can go on a musk ox safari, because in fact we have the only musk ox uh, population in Norway in, at that area, and that's only one and a half hours from Trondheim. But also the coast, of course, is connected with the uh, speedboats, so um, you can uh, go out to the coastal area where we get all these fantastic seafood from, or you can jump on or off. Hurtiruten or Havila, if you are joining other coastal areas or the whole coast of Norway with a trip to Trondheim. So it's really uh, easy to have Trondheim as a hub and then just drive around in a sustainable way. Mm. And of course, we also have the possibility to, to rent cars in Trondheim if you need to go some more specific area. Mm. So many different ways of arriving in Trondheim. If you come from a different country, you can fly, you can take the train, you can come by by boat or ship. Mm. Um, anyone seeking out a more active stay and want more adventure uh, during their visit, what type of activities do you offer in Trondheim? Uh, as I already mentioned, the, the nature is really close. Uh, so... Um, Uh, we have this uh, recreational area close by, which is called the Bymarka, where we in the summertime go hiking and in the wintertime go cross-country skiing. You can join a guided kayak tour on the River Nidelven, passing the colorful wooden warehouses and seeing the city from another perspective. Or, of course, take a guided city walk, which are really popular too. Mm. You can... Um, Uh, go um, with the sightseeing boats on the fjord out to the island of Munkholmen, which is kind of 15 minutes away. And um, uh, you can go bicycling. It's really easy to go bicycling in, uh, in uh, Trondheim. Um, short distances, easy going, and lots of stops where there's much to uh, hear about and uh, uh, get a touch of the history of the town. Mm. And in the winter time, you can also experience some skiing and alpine sport yeah, for sure. activities. Yes, for sure. Uh, that's uh, only half an hour away. So if you really go for alpine adventures at the Vassfjelle, uh, that's a half an hour from the city center. Or you go to Opdal, which mm. is our close by uh, alpine area. Mm. But if you want to go either ice skating or, um, or cross-country skiing, You could do it in Bymarka or ice skating. You can even do directly in the city center at Solsiden, where we have an ice skating area uh, three, four months during the winter time. Oh, that's lovely. And for non-skiers, you can also try things like husky or dog sledding. And there's a lot of yeah, other things sure. you can... Though you have to go a bit out of the city center yeah. then. No, that's like uh, one, one to two hours outside Trondheim. There are these suppliers who offer such a really uh, uh, nature experience as husky uh, adventures. 
Awesome. Can't wait to try it. You should. Kirsten, this is so inspiring. I can't wait to go back to Trondheim. It is one of my favorite cities in Norway. Thank you so much for sharing all these awesome insights on Trondheim with our listeners. And now, if you heard us mention the yes, yes, no questions earlier, did you figure out the correct answer? Well, the three things we mentioned, one being false, were A, this is the final stop of the northernmost pilgrimage in the world. And yes, this is true. B, you can take your bike on a lift so you don't have to bike uphill. Also true. Or C, go swimming in the Nidelven River. Well, the false here is C. We do advise listeners not to try swimming in the Nidelven River in Trondheim due to its strong currents, and we always, always want to promote safety here at Visit Norway. However, as Kristen mentioned, renting a kayak or a stand-up paddleboard is not just safer, but a far more fun option. So try that the next time you visit Trondheim. Cheers. That wraps this episode of Norway Next. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you'd like to learn more about today's episode, you can check out visitnorway.com slash podcast for more on travel to Norway. You will also find us on all social media platforms as Visit Norway. So make sure to follow, subscribe, share and love. And thanks for checking out our podcast.